What's up, everyone? My name is Leo, and welcome back to episode two of Landscape Marketing Mastery. This is a comprehensive course on digital marketing for your home service and landscaping business with a focus of bringing in more profitability and revenue and overall success for your landscaping business. Today, we're going to be talking about developing your brand voice. If you haven't seen the first episode, I strongly recommend watching it. I'll link it up in the top corner right here. Um, that involves understanding your audience, getting some customer personas laid out, which is going to be essential to the episode today. So let's dive in. In this episode, we're going to be looking at how you can position yourself in your community so that you can stand out amongst your competitors and close more sales. All right, before we dive into the details, a little bit about me. My name's Leo. I worked in the office of a landscaping and tree service company, which is where I got familiar with marketing. I developed a system that I call the client surge workflow, and it's something that I currently employ in my business, New Hope Creative, to help other landscaping and home service businesses achieve those same tremendous results. So what is brand voice? Brand voice refers to the unique personality and tone that you convey as a business and through all of your marketing and communication materials. This is really important because it builds your brand's personality and it creates consistency across all platforms so that you can build trust among your prospects and leads. So why this is so important, if you can imagine a shift from one tone or inflection to another in a brand's voice, it can make your customers and their customers question the stability of a brand. They don't want things to change. They want the brand voice to be super consistent. And if they don't hear that, if they think they're getting two different things, they are going to start to mistrust you. And that is not what you want. You want your prospects to really be on board and have full trust in what you're doing and feel comfortable hiring you as a landscaper to work on their property. So going off of that, your brand voice needs to be consistent with your brand story and your value propositions and your services. Now, what that means is if you have some super commendable story, a heroic story about how you came to be, or if you have a story about how, you know, you came up as just a little guy mowing lawns in the neighborhood, but now you're this friendly guy who's doing lawns everywhere. Um, you want to make sure that your voice is aligned with that. And your brand voice also needs to be consistent with the value propositions that you offer. If part of your service is that you're friendly and you're willing to talk and give people advice on what they should do, then make your brand voice be friendly. If your value proposition is that you get stuff done fast and efficiently, then maybe don't include that as much. Maybe you should be a little bit more straight to the point so that you don't have customers that are coming up and talking to you on the job because that can take up a lot of time. So really what this comes down to is just making sure that your brand voice is aligned with your values as a business and as a business owner and how your customers see value in your business. So a unique brand voice in your community can really help to set you apart from your competition. And this is something that we're going to be diving into a little bit more today. A common example of brand voice in the community is if most landscape companies in your area are unprofessional in their language, one way that you can easily stand out against them is just by being a bit more professional. Use proper grammar. It's not that hard, but it'll make you stand out. All right. So step one is analyzing your brand. You need to dive deep on who you are, what you offer, and what you value as a business. What are the values that are driving your services? Why are you doing what you're doing? So you need to discuss with your team and your partners how those core values that you have influence the way that you communicate with your audience. This is step one. All right, I've got a worksheet linked down below but we're gonna dive into it right now and fill it out together. If you wanna download it and fill it out yourself, I highly recommend that. Okay, coming into the worksheet here, um, we quickly go over brand voice and it's some of the stuff that I've already talked about a little bit, but brand voice refers to the personality and emotional inflection infused into a company's communications. Think of tone of voice. So it encompasses everything from the words and language used to the tone and style. It extends across all mediums, so all platforms on social media. This means from your print material, any business cards or stuff like that, to the actual words on your website and social media and emails, your brand voice should be the same everywhere. So the purpose of this worksheet is not to give you a definite answer, a clear cut cookie cutter answer on what your brand voice should be. Um, the purpose of this worksheet is more so to just trigger your thought process and help you determine your most effective brand voice. <clears throat> if you have not completed worksheet number one that we went over last episode, um, uh, again, I'll link it up here. I really recommend going over that because we help to find your customer personas and that's going to be essential in this worksheet. So for the sake of this video, I'm going to be taking on the persona of a landscaping business who focuses primarily on lawn care in a demographic of uh, people who are relatively younger and just spend a lot of time at work. They don't have time to be hanging out with their families. They just want someone to mow their lawn and that's it. 
So in section one, we're going to be putting a mark on each scale from where we think our business lies. So as a lawn care business who focuses primarily on just getting lawns done for people who are busy, don't have time to do it themselves, I'm going to say we're going to lie more on the end of professional. We just want them to, to be comfortable with what we're, we're doing. Um, we want them to not feel obligated to talk to us and be friendly with us because really they just want someone to do their lawn. They don't want to have to deal with it. They are already busy enough. So we're going to lie more on the end of professional. Inspiring versus informative, probably more informative. You know, we don't want to give some, give these people, hey, I think you should put in this garden box over here. It doesn't really make sense. They're already busy enough as is, but we should be informative to these people and let them know if something is going wrong with their grass. For example, hey, um, this edge of your yard doesn't look like it's getting enough water. If that's something that you could look out on, it would, it would bring a much greener and more visibly appealing um, look to your lawn. That's something that they would want to hear. They wouldn't want to hear, hey, so I've got this idea for a retaining wall. No, they don't want to, they don't want to hear it. Innovative versus traditional, um, probably right in the middle. Cause the thing is, they're not really going to care. It seems like, um, you know, you could have some nice new tech, but if, if they are fine with the mowers you've been using the whole time, that's really all they care about. They just want it to look fine. If they are eco-friendly, then, you know, maybe more innovative, but that's not who we're targeting right now. And this is just going to be something that you know about your business so that you can fill it out properly. Exciting versus relaxing. They just want to relax, man. They've been at work all day. Um, probably going to be leaning more towards the relaxing side. Okay, authoritative or peer-like. This one is a little bit difficult, but you got to think about what you're offering to your customer. If you believe that you can offer education for them and help them figure out what they can do with their lawn more, then that's something that I would recommend being more on the authoritative side. Now, this isn't something where, by authoritative, I don't mean that you're bossing them around. By authoritative, I mean that you are a source of knowledge and you feel comfortable sharing it and giving advice on what you think is best for that client. So I'm going to say that being authoritative is probably a good thing in this scenario because you could give recommendations, like I said, um, as informative. You can be informative and an authority figure in the lawn care space. They'll be trusting of what you're saying. If you're more peer-like and you're casual in your communication about, oh, yeah, you know, little rough edges over there, be more detailed. People want to see that you know what you're talking about. So I would say be more authoritative in this segment where we are focusing on people who need their lawns mode because they're busy at work all day. Luxurious versus economical. Probably more economical. People just want their lawn done. They don't care about, you know, the 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 shiny edges, the gold and silver. All they really care about is, look, I want my lawn done. I want it to be relatively affordable. That's it. Section two, we're going to be listing three to five of our core values. Now, this is going to be different based on who you are and who your company is but I'm going to be using just three to five off the top of my head today so that we can get a good idea of who this brand is. So as this lawn care business who helps primarily busy millennials with their lawns, um, the core values that we stand for are efficiency. We stand for high quality work. We stand for attention to detail. We stand for um, quality communication. We stand for a cost effective service. Okay. So for section three, this is your target audience. This is going to be your customer personas that you defined in episode one. So if you have that worksheet, uh, feel free to bring it out right now. We're going to be talking about how your customer personas are going to affect your overall brand voice. So like I said, for this lawn care company, their primary customer persona is busy millennials who are too busy working to mow their lawn. Now, if you have other customer personas that you want to target, feel free to fill them in here. Um, for the purpose of this video, this is just going to be the one customer persona that I'm using, but you should definitely put in all three because all three customer personas are going to be necessary to figuring out your final brand voice. So what is your brand mission statement? This is going to be a concise sentence that explains your company's purpose and how it serves its customers. We help young families spend more time together by taking care of their lawns.
There we go. Easy, simple. This is what you provide to your customers. This is what you want to accomplish for your customers. It's not just, hey, I want to make your lawn look good. This is very, like, that's basic. A lot of, a lot of lawn care companies are just, I want to make it look good. But if you can offer an appeal to the emotional end of the customer, I want to free up their time so that you can spend more time with your family. That's a mission statement right there. We're going to dive into that in the emotional appeal as well. For section five, your vision statement. We will provide top notch, efficient lawn care for 10% of the market share in our area. Here you go. 10% is a really good number to be at. Um, if you can do that, that's a, that's a good mission. If you want to eventually open up new locations, definitely include that in your vision statement as well. This should be a long-term goal that you have for your company. Where do you want to go as a company? So keep that in mind for the sake of this video, just keeping it simple. All right. Section six, what is the emotional appeal? Okay. This is something that I covered a little bit in section four, but it's important that you know how you're going to appeal to the emotions of your customer. So as a lawn care company, focusing on busy millennial families, we allow families to spend more time together. Take the worry out of having to mow their lawn. We instill excitement because the lawn is taken care of by the time they get home. Because of the high quality of our work, our clients feel comfortable leaving us on their property while they are at work and they come home to a beautiful end product. Boom. If you hear that as a customer, oh my God, like think about it. Like if you have a salesman at your door for a lawn care company and they're saying this, man, who wouldn't want to hire that? Especially in this demographic, people want that. Okay, so section seven, you want to go back to section one and see what your brand personality is. How do you want to talk to your customers? This is when we actually start to define your brand voice. This is really important. So if you're more professional, informative, you're in the middle of the road here. Um, if you're relaxing, authoritative, and economical, think about how you would want to talk to your people. You don't want to be spitting out jokes and... Um, and you know just wasting time with silly like memes and stuff like this is something that can be effective but you got to remember that it all plays into your brand voice so if you're if your brand is that you know you're goofy and you're funny and you like having a good time and hanging out with the customers do that that's fine post memes that's that's completely fine but in this specific example we are to the point we're informative we're an authority figure in our space so we offer advice and information and education on what we do and how that can be beneficial to our customers. We want to be pretty straight to the point. We don't want to be joking around. So we're going to be relatively formal. We use some industry jargon, but not so much that it confuses the customer. If we do use industry jargon, explain its meaning so that we are educating our customer base. We are friendly, but not overly so, because we are an authority in our space and are not to be treated as peers or close friends. Think about it. Like, do you want to be conversing and hanging out with your customers or do you want to just go mow their lawn and then get on to the next one and then the next one and then the next one so that you are getting a full day of work? Think about it. Just think about it. You got to be time effective here, especially in this company. Now, if your company is different, again, make this to your own brand, to your own business. This is just the example that I'm doing for the sake of this video. This worksheet is down below. Make sure you fill it out so that you have your own idea of who your brand is. Brand story. Okay, I'm just going to make something up. I started out with a partnership for a hardscaping business. Eventually saw the value in providing clean cut lawns for busy families. 
you wanted wanted to change your service so that you could better serve the community. So essentially I'm saying here, you offered a high ticket service that was cool, but you saw that it was only going to a few people. So instead what you wanted to do is you wanted to make a bigger impact in the community by offering a time-saving service to busy families because you know the value of people spending time together. Hit that emotional appeal, people love it. Step nine for your visual elements. This would be stuff like stuff specific to your logo, um, the colors that you use, the fonts you use on your website, um, and any type of imagery. So if you have a mascot, make sure that you're using that mascot in here and just keeping that in mind. Differentiators, these are three uniques. This is gonna be what sets you apart from your competition. So what the, this is also your value propositions. These are the three things that you want to market and communicate to your audience so that they know what sets you apart. So for this company, we would say that they are time efficient, low communication, but great customer service. What I mean by this is they don't have to reach out to you often. Um, you just mow their lawn. They don't have to talk to you about it. It's on a you know weekly or biweekly recurring basis and you just get it done and you move on and they don't have to talk to you. Um, you know, they're busy. Um, let's see, time efficient, affordable. These are working class families. You have an affordable service. You get it done quickly. That's it. It can be simple. But if you say, hey, look, I'm time efficient. You won't ever have to talk to me. I'll get it done quickly. And it's an affordable service. Easy. That's how you sell. All right, we're going to jump back into the worksheet here where you're going to use the answers on this worksheet to help define your brand voice. So step two is once you figured out who your customers are, and you know, hopefully you did that in part one, you need to use those customer personas to align your brand voice with your audience. So like I said in, in, in the worksheet, you wanna make sure that what you're pushing and what you're communicating and the way that you are speaking to your customers makes sense for them. So if they don't wanna to talk to you, if they just care about getting their lawn mode, you wanna be concise, but you wanna get the point across. We'll go into more examples. So you can only have one brand voice. So you need to be considerate of all of your customer categories and choose a tone that will be effective with them all. Now, yes, you can segment your audience in different marketing materials, but your brand voice needs to remain the same. Can you really guarantee that someone in one segment of your audience isn't gonna see a piece of marketing just out and about in a different segment of, the, of your audience? So what I'm saying by that is if you have customer A and they see a piece of marketing meant for customer B, and it sounds different, that's gonna spark mistrust. It's, oh, who is that? That's not who I'm used to hearing. I'm used to hearing category A marketing, but I'm hearing category B marketing. Okay, hold on, something's not right. Mistrust starts to brew. They don't feel as comfortable with your company. This is important. You wanna make sure that you have one brand voice. You can also your messaging and your segmentation, but make sure that you have one brand voice, super important. So, like I said, your brand voice and your messaging are different. You can change your messaging based on which segment you're speaking to, but your brand voice needs to remain the same. So once you have a good idea of what you're going to do with step two and aligning yourself with your customer personas, you want to analyze your competition. So if you have a solid understanding of the brand voice of your competitors, what you can do is you can effectively shape your own so that you stand out. This is really important. So what you, what you can do with this, visit their social media pages, visit their websites, you're not copying them. That's not what you're doing right now. What you are doing is you're analyzing your market. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just smart business. So review their communication. How do they talk about themselves? Just keep that in mind. How do they communicate with their customers? What's going on in their marketing material? Now, identify their strengths and weaknesses. If you see a hole that needs to be filled, if they're not professional, like I mentioned earlier, that's a hole you can fill. You can be that professional voice. If their grammar isn't there and it's obvious, be the person whose grammar is there. Like it's really simple, just super, super simple stuff. So take a look at this diagram as well. You have your offer and you have your customer's needs and you have your competitor's offer. There's going to be overlap where your competitor's offer hits your customer's needs more than your offer. This is the competitive disadvantage right here that you're seeing. There's going to be parts where you and your competitors offer overlap. There are going to be parts where your offer hits your customer's needs more than your competitor. This is your competitive advantage. This is the top part right here that's outlined in white. It's super important to know what your competitive advantage is because then you can push that in your marketing. 
if your customers are seeing that you offer something they need that your competition can't offer, they're going to go to you. Simple, just think about it. What is your competitive advantage? How can you use it to your benefit? So once you've analyzed your market, put yourself in that unique space where you have the positioning in your local community where you're standing out amongst your competition. You want to be a person that's sparking interest and not the same old person that they see everywhere else. Because there are a lot of landscapers and you want to be someone that stands out. You don't want to be someone that blends in with the crowd. Step four is to define your brand personality. So like I said in the worksheet, you want to list out those three to five top traits that you see as part of your business, part of who you are, how you present to your community. And you want to translate these traits into tone. So for example, if your brand is friendly, your brand voice might be casual and personal. So let's take a look at some of these top brands right here. Um, take a look at Pampers. They're a diaper brand. They're a caregiver, as it mentions here. Think about their tone of voice. It's almost like they're parenting you. Like they are offering comfort and saying, hey, we offer a solution. We'll make life more comfortable for you. So think about how you can position yourself in there. So again, be sure to keep in mind your target audience of what kind of tone and candor they would respond best to. If these are the type of people that already know everything about their, their lawn and their landscape, then maybe you shouldn't offer yourself as an authority figure. Maybe you should offer yourself as a peer. You're being social with them, like Ikea, the regular guy. You want to be on the same level as them. Whereas if your clientele doesn't know anything about landscaping at all, position yourself like Mercedes. You're the ruler, you're offering your authority, you're offering your, your education to them so that they trust you. Think about it. Step five, once you have all of this in place, you need to start to apply your brand voice in your website copy, your social media posts, your email newsletters, really any communication that you have with your customers. So this is all stuff that we're going to get to in specifics later in this course. We're going to get to the tech and, and the specifics of how to do these things. But if you don't have your brand voice laid out, you're going to struggle with how to put these together in a comprehensive and cohesive way so that they all fit together. And that's what the client search workflow is. It's a bunch of different marketing methods that all mesh together because they're working in tandem. They're all designed at one time so that they work together to lead customers from awareness, from barely knowing who you are, to being customers that you retain for years to come. So this is really important. Once you start to apply your brand voice, this is your testing phase. You need to gather feedback on how your audience is responding to this new voice. Yes, you are going to be consistent with this voice once it is good once it is doing what it's supposed to. But if you see problems with it, don't be consistent with something that is just causing you problems. It's common sense. So you need to test. You need to analyze the results. You need to look at your audience and make sure that what you're doing is actually having a positive impact. So look at stuff like their engagement. Are they engaging more with you with this new tone of voice that you're putting off? Are they more likely to convert or are they less likely to convert? Do people trust you more? Do people trust you less? What do you want? Make changes as needed, refine. So remember, it's okay to test and get it right. Once you get it right, that's when you'll maintain the consistency, which is step six, maintaining consistency. So you need to keep your brand voice consistent across all platforms and types of communication. Consistency is key in building trust, and you need to make sure that your team is trained up so that everyone understands why you have the brand voice you do, how to effectively use it, and how to apply it in their communications so that everyone on your team is consistent across all platforms. So as a summary for today, you need to understand the importance of your brand voice. Do some research on it if you need. Um, it's essentially just how you present yourself as a personality, as a brand, the traits that you put off and the values that your customers see in your brand and how you align with that. How do you talk to your customers to push what you want to them, to push the relevant info to them, to be the person that they want you to be. So step two is to identify your values as a business. Step three is to assess your audience and make sure that your brand voice aligns with what they need and what they want. Step four is to analyze your competitors, see where there's a hole in the market that you can fill, fill it so that you're unique and you stand out in your local area. Step five is to define your traits and your personality. What matters? How do you present yourself? What what character traits do you have as a business? You have them. You just need to figure out what they are. 
Step six is to test your brand voice, refine it. And step seven is to maintain consistency across all platforms and among all team members. Make sure that your team is familiar with this brand voice. It's important that you all speak to your customers in the same way. So next class is gonna be Google ads. So we'll discuss the best practices for running effective ads in your local area. So this includes stuff like YouTube ads, the display network, search ads, and the strategy behind all of it. So if you found this information useful, if you're having a good time learning about how to market your landscaping business, please like, share, and subscribe. It makes a huge difference over on my end, and I will see you in the next video.